Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this module, we explain why we should inspect bowed roller surfaces and what an uneven surface might imply. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Recall from our spreading module that many bowed roller spreaders are intended to operate in the bowed roller mode as opposed to the bent pipe mode. This would require traction to do the spreading work. A glazed or slippery cover might not give you the traction you want, especially at higher speeds when air entrainment becomes a factor on smooth webs. Also recall from the roller spreader and wrinkling modules that a diameter variation represents a wrinkling risk, especially on thin webs. Since wear is always uneven, the resulting variable diameter profile will have the tendency to wrinkle on the very devices that are intended to spread. Note we say tendency rather than certainty. Recall from the wrinkling module that thick webs will tolerate roller diameter variation better than thin webs. In addition to these concerns, we might find that wear has a pattern that might give clues for uneven webs or applications. For example, a narrow wear band on the edges of the web run might mean one thing, the edges of the web cut the cover, while a narrow band in the middle may mean something entirely different. This slide is a bit of review from our spreading module that will be necessary to follow the next slides. Recall that the bowed roller can operate in two modes, the bowed roller mode and the bent pipe mode. In film and paper, the intent is usually to use the bowed roller mode. Here, the bow is oriented along the path of the web. The mechanics are simple to describe. It is a good old normal entry law. The web engines bend outward to meet the curved axle at a right angle. However, in order for this law to operate, we must have traction. Note that if we push the bow more than available traction, the web will be forced into sliding, beginning at the outer edges first. This makes sense as the outer edges are where we are forcing the edges outward the most while the middle has an easy job. It just goes straight on through. So the outer edges may be in sliding when the bows are pushed a bit too far for the available traction. In contrast, the tissue and textile industries tend to operate in the bent pipe mode. Here, the whole surface is in sliding even if the cover appears to turn at web speed. Imagine rounding a curve too fast in your car and sliding out on the curve. Your wheels will still be turning. It is just that they are not in traction. The way to recognize the bent pipe mode is that the bow is not pointed along the web run, but rather well up into the web run. This following series of wear schematics show simplified wear patterns on a bowed roller cover and how the wear patterns vary with the amount of bow. If the web is dead level and the roller is dead level, i.e. no bow, the wear will be even across the web width. If we put a mild bow, we will tend to wear more on the ends. The reason is simple. That is where we are trying to force the web sideways the most and that's where slippage will first occur. If we put more bow, we will tend to also slide at the ends. However, in response, the attentive operator may start orienting the bow more into the sheet run so that the web paths are shorter there and edge contact may be lost. Here, the wear and possibly wrinkling problems move inward, which some call quarter point spreading problems. What they mean is great spreading in the middle, little to none at the edges, but possibly wrinkling or even interweaving midway between the edges and the center. With extreme overbowing for given conditions, the attentive operators will be pointing the bow even more into the sheet, and thus the ends in the quarter point may be so slack that there is no contact and there is no wear. The wear is focused in the middle where there is still contact between the web and the spreader. Of course, these pictures are schematic and oversimplified. The edges of the web cut more than elsewhere. Also, running webs of different widths or positions smears out the wear on most of the ends. The result of these two factors mean that most bowed rollers wear into a bow tie shape. Finally, persistent baggy patterns mean that you will get wear on the tight bands.
This bowed roller is worn much more in the middle than on the ends. Here, we can offer two working theories that meet all the information we are given thus far. First, is that the bowed roller might be operating toward the bent pipe mode. The picture seems to show a pretty heavy bow followed by a very short after spreader span. It is plausible that the paper web can't follow the abrupt change requested of it. In response, the attentive operator will likely orient the bow a bit into the sheet run towards the bent pipe mode and where will thus move to the center as a result. The second working theory is even simpler. This machine is a rewinder that sees a lot of different web widths. Since it is operated in center justification, where will also be focused in the center because the center will always see the web while quarter points only on occasion and the edges only rarely. In any case, this case history is not intended to critique spreading per se. Bode rollers can operate successfully in either mode. And also the pragmatist should always avoid fixing that something that is not broken. If spreading causes little waste and delay, it should be left alone. Rather, this case history is just to illustrate that with very little information, such as wear patterns, one can often generate working theories that might be useful should there be a problem in that area. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. If you have any questions or ideas for future topics, just drop me a line.